What's up, Yup Gang? It's your boy Taxon, and welcome back to Yup DBSD Things. And today we're going over another very exciting deck profile, guys. This is going to be a deck that I've seen prowling around my local for the last few weeks, and I decided to snatch it up so you guys can check it out. With that being said, this is Lord Slug. But before we get into it, guys, I do want to say if you guys want any custom mats and or sleeves, definitely check out Pro Mats, guys. This is the best place to go get your custom card needs. And if you guys do decide to get a map from Pro Mats, make sure you guys use the promo code Yup to save on your entire order. With that being said, guys, we are on the road to 2,000 subscribers, so if you guys are not already subbed, make sure you guys are subbed for when we get there, we are doing a big giveaway. With that being said, guys, if you guys enjoyed this list or my content in general, remember to hit all those buttons for me, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss a video, and with that being said, let's turn this around and dive in. Alrighty, you guys, and here we are with the list, Lord Slug, a unique profile that I've seen roaming around my locals, and I was like, dude, I gotta get the list, so absolutely, tell us about your deck and your matchups throughout this week. Alright. So this is the set 12 slug leader that was Vicious Rejuvenation, Unison Warrior Block. Uh, auto, when he attacks, both you and your opponent draw a card, which already off the bat, when this was released, this was a very weird looking leader, but there's a reason for it. Uh, second auto, if you have three or more energy, when you activate a Rejuvenate skill, you draw two cards and flip this card over. And then Awaken, when your life's at four or less, both you and your opponent draw a card, and you switch two of your energy to active mode. And then he's a Lord Slug, Slug's Army. Backside, permanent. Uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, kind of simplify the text a little bit. Permanent, if your opponent has seven or less cards in your hand, he loses 5k power during their turn, because he's a 20k naturally, so that brings him down to a 15k. Auto, when he attacks, both you and your opponent draw one card. Activate main once per turn. If your opponent has 10 or more cards in their hand, play up to one mono green Slug's Army with energy cost of two or less from your drop area. So the deck is all about making your opponent draw cards and getting skill bonuses off of it. I believe the original win con for the deck was to basically mill your opponent out by, or making them draw out. But this does something a little bit different. So the unison that came alongside this, because Rejuvenate is a unison skill, was a King Piccolo Dimensional Conqueror. Rejuvenate once per turn, Fleer card is green, you remove four markers from this card. Uh, he's a two specified. Uh, activate main, pay a green. If your lyric card is mono green and your opponent has seven or more cards in their hand, you can play this card from your hand with, two, with one marker on it, and you can't play unison cards for the turn. Plus one, you place one card from your hand under him. Both you and your opponent draw one card. You play a green ballot card with an original energy cost of one from your hand. And at the end of the turn, your opponent places up to one card from their hand at the bottom of their deck. So he is a plus one, he breaks even on his skill, makes your opponent draw a card, and they have the option to bottom deck a card. Which is, I mean, for the mill out strategy, it, but whatever, it is what it is. It's to play one drops, and then rejuvenate as an alternate way to awaken him if your opponent's not hitting you. So, green Namekian leader, I went with Namekian Duo Sanel as my super combo. This is a set four card. Auto, when you combo with this card, if your leader card is a green Namekian and your life's at 4 or less, draw one and he gains 10,000 combo power for the turn. I'm only running three of him. I have one of the Lord Slug Mighty Agent of Destruction. So, super combo unique, auto, when your opponent activates counterplay skill, they choose two cards in their hand and discards them. So obviously he's a two drop, he is Slug's Army, so he can be played <laughs> off this skill. Uh, which is the, the only real way to play him in the deck, because he's a two-specified green. It's just there for some extra kind of control uh, for in punishing what your opponent does. <laughs> so, into the Slug's Army package. Wings of Morale Booster. Uh, effectively, he is barrier unique. Permanent reduce the energy cost of Slug's Army cards in your hand by one. That, that's it. He, he reduces their cost by one, makes it easier to play them. And there's a very important reason for him. Now, we're jumping around the sets a little bit. Set 12, uh, Lord Slug, what is he? Conqueror Restore. Auto Fleer card, Slug's Army card. When this card is played from your hand, you and your opponent draw one card. Then at the end of the turn, your opponent chooses up to one card from their hand and places it at the bottom of their deck. Again, going to simplify his text here. Activate main, limit one. If your leader card is a Slug's Army card and your opponent has seven or more cards in their hand, play up to one mono green Slug's Army card with 19,000 power or less from your hand. 
So limit one, plays a 19k or less slugs army from your hand. A mono green 19k or less slugs army from your hand uh, for free. And he makes you and your opponent draw one card, so getting that activate main off is not difficult at all. Jumping back into the set four days. Lord Slug, uh, return to form. Auto, when you play this card, choose up to one Slug's army card, if you cost a four less in your deck, and add it to your hand, then shuffle your deck. It's a searcher. Because it's only got one specified green, it becomes a one drop if you have this wings out. And obviously this wings can come out for free if you have him out already. So he comes out for one, making him free with his plus one. He's only a one drop, so he's a one drop searching for any four or less Slug's army from your deck. And he is not color restricted. And he's also another target for this skill. Stop falling over. Okay. Back to set 12. Lord Slug, Thwarter of Plants. Uh, deflect, auto, bond two if your leader card is a Slug's army card. When your opponent combos with a card, you may place that card in someone's drop area. If you do, you and your opponent draw one card, then negate the skill for the duration of the turn. Auto when this card is removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill or KO'd. If your opponent has seven more cards in hand, play up to one green slugs army card that your cost of one from your drop area. So he goes back into this, and obviously his activate main is designed to play this guy. Uh, so it basically interrupts your opponent being able to combo. It goes immediately to drop area, so they don't get to Z charge it, which is a huge thing for it. And it makes you and your opponent draw one card, so it helps keep your hand up and uh, feeds into the whole uh, milling out by drawing thing, and it doesn't let your opponent bottom deck at the end of turn. Now, Lord Slug, Agent of Destruction. He's a three with two specified green, so again, reduced by one. Auto, when you play this card, your opponent chooses one card from their hand and place it in their drop area to help mitigate all the drawing you're doing, you're get all the cards you're giving them in hand. But more importantly, activate main once per turn. Choose up to one Slug's Army card that with an original energy cost of three or less. I'm butchering the order of that. Choose up to one Slug's Army card from your hand with an original energy cost of three or less other than Lord Slug, Agent of Destruction, and play it. So again, you can use his skill to play this, but there are some more important cards you can play off that. So yeah, he just makes your opponent discard. His main goal is just to... Uh, play your other Slug's Army cards. And he, yeah, comes out for two because of wings, etc. Right now I have two of this, set four Adonic Warrior uh, Angila. Critical, auto, bond two Slug's Army. Flare card, Slug's Army card. When this card attacks, your opponent discards a card. It makes your opponent discard a card. Again, can be played off this, can be played off this. Which, that, that's the big thing, is that this deck plays a lot of three drops for cheap or for free, completely. Now, so far, all the cards have been mono green, so all of them can be played off this. So why do I have this in here? Because there are yellow Slugs army cards, which are really good. Lord Slug Super Namekian. Unique barrier, permanent bond to when this card is in rest mode, your opponent can't add cards from their deck to their hand using non-leader card skills. Neither of these are leader card skills. So your opponent no longer gets draws off of their skills, which is the whole point of the deck, is to basically be able to continuously deny your opponent combos by having him in rest mode, free playing your other cards, making your opponent discard constantly. And it, it's, it's a weird kind of hand control, but just denying your opponent the ability to draw cards is huge. Leaning into kind of the whole green-yellow archetype, we've got two of Angula the Graceful Warrior. Unique critical, auto bond two if your opponent has four more cards in rest mode. When this card attacks, your opponent chooses two of their rest mode cards, and those cards can't be switched to active mode until the until the start of your next turn. It's a little bit of extra control. It's played off the AOD slug skill. It has crit. It's the counterpart to the and that uh, just says cards? Yeah, just bond two. And, so, oh yeah, and it's, So if they don't have any battle cards in, in play, they're forced to target their either unisons and leaders or their energy? Correct. That's pretty sweet. Which is huge. Being able to forcing your opponent to re to 
keep their energy tapped is huge, or sacrifice their other skills. Yeah, like a draw from their leader, that's huge. Yeah. Uh, this is a green-yellow deck. Lord Slug, youth regained. Energy exhaust, double strike, successor for one green. Permanent, if this card would be removed from your battle area, it is sent to your warp to its owner's warp instead. Auto bond three if leader card is green. When this card attacks, choose one. You either rip a card from your opponent's hand or KO rest mode battle card. I only ended up playing this once today, but it is very useful. Unfortunately, even though Wings does reduce his cost by one, Successor goes off original energy cost, so you still need the total of six. But with his skill being able to play any three or less Slugs army from your hand and having just a plethora of three drops to choose from, you're going to be able to get his uh, Successor off relatively easily when you want to. And one of the problems with this deck is it doesn't have a whole lot of removal other than the, that 6-drop slug. It has no removal whatsoever. I'm using Grade 8 Mass Sam, Primal Carnage is my secret. 1 plus 10, Ultimate, Auto if your card is Mono Green. And you remove this card in your combo area from the game. When you combo with this card, just lift one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, and KO it. Uh, and then activate main for 5 green, play him from your hand, and he gains full attack and triple strike for the turn. He removes something, ignoring barrier. KO's ignoring barrier for 1, which is huge. Uh, there are probably other secrets that would be more useful. This is just what I had, and it is what I want. Like I said, there's no removal in this deck. So being able to just get rid of something that would kill you is great. In mid-battle sniping battle card is awesome. Yes, it, you can get rid of it in the middle of your opponent's turn, so if they go in on a battle card, you can just get rid of it, unless it can't be KO'd. So, that's all the battle cards. Extra cards, we're using a green leader, shocking death ball, counterattack, leader cards, green negate the attack, and KO an opponent's battle card, two or less. Permanent, sparking five, you can activate the counter skill by taking the life instead of paying the energy cost. Sparking negate, simple, and very useful. I'm running four Assimilates. I'm a little unsure about this card now because I'm not running a whole lot of two or less Namekians. Because the skill Activate Main, choose up to one green or yellow Namekian card, then you cost a two or less from your deck and add it to your hand, and then it was errata, then shuffle your deck. It just gets you the cards you need for your combos. You can use it to search out your super combos, especially this guy for free playing off of it. Uh, you can use it to search for your. Uh, the two drop slug, wherever I put him, uh, which becomes one when Wings is out. It's very useful for the deck to just get the pieces you need. Two focus breakthroughs. Counterplay if your leader card is green and your life is four less. The battle card being played as energy cost of three or less is placed in order to drop area instead. Permanent if you have a multicolor card in your energy, you can activate the counter skill without paying its energy cost by adding a card from life to hand. That's not going to happen. This deck doesn't charge green-yellow energy. It's only got one green-yellow battle card in it. It's mostly just a counterplay to hit a three or less. Two artificial impacts. For three energy, activate main if your card is green. Choose a battle card, an opponent's battle card, ignoring barrier, KO it, then rip a card from your opponent's hand. And activate battle, which this permanent makes it free. Choose one of your cards, it gets plus 5,000 power for the duration of the battle. Gets rid of things ignoring barrier. Very useful if I'm going up against another deck that's using this slug card, because me not being able to draw would also really hurt. And it's double value. I, like getting a discard on top of getting rid of one of their barrier threats is huge. It is. It's and very. You get to snag it, so you can you can snag like a secret rare or something. You can. The number of times I've hit a secret rare off this skill is nuts. And not even when they have like two or three cards in hand. This is out of six or seven card hands. Final two cards to make 50. Two homicidal clones. Counterattack. Leader card is green. Play a Metamacha token. It has 5,000 power. Zero combo cost. 5,000 combo power. And it gains blocker for the turn. Permanent. Life is five or less. You can take it. You can add a card from life to hand instead of paying its energy cost. It is another free negate uh, to go alongside Shocking Death Ball. And being able to play a blocker is useful in every matchup except yellow, because like, more likely than not, they're going to be able to rest the blocker. So, w one thing I know people are going to ask no Frieza's, no Dormants, no Boo Posts. The reason I don't have Frieza's in here is because I only have two of the King Piccolo units. 
this deck doesn't really need a unison. I mean, this is nice being able to free play the one drops, but usually I just end up paying one for them anyways and they stick on board because the one is replayed. The They can both be replayed off of the combo killing slug off of his skill when he's removed. They have seven or more cards in their hand. Despite being a hand control deck, my opponent usually ends up having quite a lot of cards in their hand. So giving them more cards off of this, especially if I use it to play wings, can be problematic. So I only have it at two, and if this is only at two, I'm most likely not going to have a unison in play. Dormant doesn't negate the, uh, the attack, so paying one for it isn't really worth it. And honestly, freezes five without this in play. And then the reason I'm not running Bupo is because it is a battle card that is being played. It can be counterplayed super easily because cards like Focus Breakthrough, the other one-drop counterplays exist. People will use those if they can. Absolutely. That's why they're teched into decks nowadays is to stop cards like Bupo. Yep. So absolutely. That's a, that's a good choice, making sure you're not teching a main floodgate battle card so that they don't have the option. Of yeah. That's pretty sweet. So... The deck lacks in defense a bit, but if you can get the full combo off with all of those slugs, it is brutal. Because they can't combo anymore, you draw when they do combo, they can't use super combos to draw cards. It's, it's, it's a rough board to get around. Especially, where are they? Because it's those two, him to make them not be able to counterplay. You've got this forcing them to keep cards in rest mode. He can constantly keep playing them. This is making them discard. It's not limit one, so you can play both of them. You can play more of them. He's not once per turn either, or his skill's once per turn, but it's not limit one, so you can have multiple of those to eat away your opponent's combo power. Overall, it's a control deck that denies your opponent the ability to draw. This leader letting your opponent draw, that's not stopped by this, that hurts a little bit, but it is still a work in progress. Make my hand bigger, daddy. <laughs> yeah. So, question. Have you tried this on any other Lord's Slug leaders? I have. I The first time I did this, I used the OG set 4 leader, uh, which on its front side, it has an activate main once per turn, add a card from life to hand, he gains crit. Awaken if you're at 4 or less, draw 2 and flip them. Auto when he on his backside, when he attacks, you draw a card, and he has an activate main once per turn, you discard a card to make your opponent discard a card. That was my original <laughs> leader for this deck, and I did it because you're getting crit on your unawakened side, so you're not letting your opponent get any cards to their hand on his attack. His awaken draws you two to refill your hand. His backside being able to just discard a card to make your opponent discard a card was huge to this archetype. And I did notice that that did hand control a a whole lot better than this does because this is constantly giving your opponent cards. The downsides is that you don't get any draws on this side, on the front side, so that hurts your ability to actually get your chain going. It doesn't untap any energy on Awaken, so you can't extend your turn by Awakening on your turn. And then a big, another big reason, this is a 20k on this side. He's a 20k on attack, which is huge nowadays. A lot, because Z leaders are a thing, you know, when they are able to combo and get cards into their Z energy. Once they Z awaken, this can match it. And this activate main is huge to be able to play your two drop slugs armies, just free value. That's, that's another part of this deck. It plays a lot of things for free or cheap. Alright, yeah, that's pretty sweet, dude. Are there any other notes about the deck? Um, I don't think so. Uh, I do think that there's... I do, I do remember when you were talking about your secret rare, you said you're doing that basically because that's what you had and you needed some removal. Is there any other options you would like to, uh, you know, maybe give these guys an idea of what secret rares they can use other than the... Yeah, uh, so <laughs> I've got the Mass Saiyan 8. Uh, the other ones, obviously, there's always... There's Panzino. Because this deck doesn't have any Flood Negate, so having some kind of Flood Negate Seeker like Panzino, uh, the Supreme Kai of Time, the good one, not the corrupted one, or the Kabito Kai would all be good options because you, 
usually have enough battle cards for Pan to be free, even without your opponent playing anything. Uh, obviously, a Supreme Kai time is very easy, and it's a board wipe, which this deck doesn't have any board wipes in it. In Kibito Kai, obviously in this particular list, you probably won't get the steal off because you're only running two unisons, but it does stop your opponent from playing any additional battle cards. Now, since you're playing a green-yellow deck and you're playing a control long game style, do you think something like Celzino would be a good idea? I did consider Celzino for the deck. and You got a lot of three, si threes and sixes in there, so I see a, a bunch of easy ways you could just pop up the 12 real quick. Yeah, this deck definitely could play Celzino easily. There is one problem. The six-drop slug cannot be used as a target for successor. Okay. Because he has that permanent, uh, if he would be moved from the battle area, he's sent to your warp instead. Because he's no longer being sent to the drop area, he does not fulfill the cost for successor. So you also cannot use him to play additional copies of him, which is why I've only got three instead of running four in here to just keep chaining off of him. But yes, you could very easily run Celzino in here. You usually can get enough value um, to make that viable, and getting that rip three would be huge. Another thing I had in here at one point in my last list was the Wicked Sands. Just pay two, they either rest four cards, or you play it and they have to warp two, or discard two, not warp. And that's a 40k dual attack blocker. That is another good option. And that card's live so early, which if you see that early, you actually want to put it out early. That can provide so much pressure. Because yeah. your opponent does not get the option to rest things in the early game. So Yes. So if you wanted to, to use one of those two and lean more into the hand control, I would likely suggest using the set trying to use the set four leader. Uh, but again, this This isn't a hand control deck. It does have some hand control elements, and it certainly, once the whole thing comes out, they are not going to be getting as many cards into their hand, so every card they have is precious. Problem is, they end up with a lot of them. So that is still something that I'm working on, and obviously if they have 12 cards in their hand, ripping three isn't going to do a whole lot. That's very true. So with that being said, that is your deck list. Do you have any final shout-outs? Uh, to you guys for allowing me to put these lists out into the world for other people to see and tinker with, uh, to my friend for designing these mats and buying them. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Alrighty, so with that being said, guys, that was Lord Slug. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. If you guys did, remember to hit all those buttons for us. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell so you never miss a video. And with that being said, we will see you guys next time.